somebody reached out to me and they asked me a question. I thought it was a really good question. They're like, what are some of the hazards of being a biomed? I was thinking to myself, it's a good question. It's kind of a complex answer though, especially this year, given the circumstances. I'm going to try and answer that for you. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Welcome back guys. This is a very good question. I'm going to see if I can answer it for y'all because this year is a special year. You guys know um, it's been very complex. There's lots of hazards. There's way more hazards this year than there was last year. So let's try and go over some of this. I always thought to myself, you know, I, I'm always trying to protect my hands. I'm always trying to protect my eyes. We are put on the spot in a moment's notice where you don't always have protection. Sometimes somebody is you know depending on you to help them out like they're unconscious on a surgical table or something and you got to run in there you're gonna you know void your own protection to try and help them out that happens sometimes but this is a very complex answer so let me see what i can do forgive me guys if this rambles a little bit because this is a long-winded answer but uh what i can think of is there's two ways to dramatically reduce your hazards. Now you guys know uh, there's all sorts of hazards. We have electrical hazards, we have body fluid hazards, um, we've got radiation hazards, we've got pneumatic and hydraulic hazards. There's even the most hazardous thing is when you're working with counterweights, like when you're doing imaging or some of the overhead stuff. Uh, I'll tell you what, I myself have almost broke my jaw because uh, I was removing a, a surgical light. Actually, I didn't intend on removing it. I was actually uh, replacing the screw on the collar that held a basically like an E-clip. And that E-clip sits in a notch and holds the light. So when that E-clip fell out, the light arm, the spring arm just took off and smashed right into the stainless steel ceiling, left a dent in the top of the ceiling. If that would have hit my jaw, which it went right here, I felt it breeze right by my ear and by this hair. If that would have hit my jaw, my jaw would have had to have been wired shut because there's so much force in one of those spring arms. But guys, there are so many different hazards. There are two ways that you can dramatically reduce your risk, okay? One of them is your hygiene. What do I mean by that? I'm not just talking about going shower. If anything, yeah, you rolling around in some, some garbage while you're at work, go home and shower before you play with the kids, all right? That happens. It actually happens more often than you'd like to think. But hygiene, we're talking about washing your hands. We're talking about sneezing in your elbow I mean there's there's lots of stuff that that evolves around hygiene and more so when you work on a team like I do it's we depend on the hygiene of each other because when we come into my shop everybody will go towards a sink and before you you just put your tools down before you touch anything we wash our hands okay and then sanitize right after you wash your hands and I've, I've talked about this in a video before it was actually like an unspoken etiquette in my shop. You know, uh, Demetrius, uh, a shout out to him. He was in a video earlier today. Demetrius uh, and I, we just kind of started doing this. Like he would go towards his sink. He's, uh, he's an excellent tech, man. I would go towards my sink. We just both wash up at the same time. And then, you know, while we're doing that, we're talking about uh, the work order and who's going to create it, who's going to close it, stuff like that. I work really closely with him. But anyway, it was just one of those unspoken etiquettes. And then I had more people added to the team. And it's one of those things where you have to kind of encourage this behavior in other people. Because the more people that are included in the group, the less likely that these etiquettes are going to carry over. So, hygiene. Washing your hands, man. Washing your hands. And part of your hygiene is wearing gloves. All right? I know. I've In videos, I've showed you guys that I'm not using gloves at all times 
that's actually not true. Um, for the most part, I use gloves all the time, all the time. And I don't just use the regular nitrile gloves. In my, my bag, I have a set of the surgeon's gloves. They're thicker, they roll down to about here, and it's, it's a much thicker material. So when I'm working on surgical tables and stuff, you're gonna be grabbing on to possibly sharper type of things. You're gonna be lifting things, stuff that normally demolishes rubber gloves. So I use surgeon's gloves. And you know, for whatever the cost it is, I mean, it's in a real thin package. I wish I had some here to show y'all. But surgeon's gloves, you just open the package, it's sterile, they fold out, you got left hand, right hand, put them on and go to work. So hygiene, that's one of the leading ways to reduce hazards. Now that gets rid of all your bloodborne pathogens and it gets rid of, you know, uh, carrying uh, diseases around in your office and stuff, the areas where you normally would catch this type of stuff. So just personal hygiene, hand hygiene, number one. Number two, and this is such a, such a big one and it's such a broad category and I apologize for that guys, but safety foresight. Believe it or not, almost every single injury out there can be predicted. You can watch it happen. I know exactly what's going to happen when I watch people work. I'm like, watch it. It's going to fall off or, hey, you know, it's spring loaded. You know, there's, there's lots of stuff that happens and it just takes a moment before you dig in. Sit there and look at it for a minute and try and figure out some of the stuff that's going on. Just today. I made a video today about some surge equips and we were uh, at the very end kind of disheartening the very last surge equip that we were sanitizing i put a very strong concentration of um, bleach in the unit and i had a leak down by the pump and guys that's what i gotta do tomorrow which you're gonna see this video tomorrow so hey that's what i'm doing today <laughs> so i've got a leak down by this stupid pump and Somebody that touched this machine before me should have detected it, but that's that's a whole nother video So I've got this leak and the pipes are full of a strong chlorine bleach solution So when I drained the whole system I told all the guys we need to add water to the system and we need to flush it and suck it all back out again Because we need to dilute that chlorine. Could you imagine like having a strong chlorine solution and just getting it in your eyes or possibly skin burns. So before you start touching something, analyze the type of chemicals that you're gonna be interacting with, the potential energy sources, whether it be batteries, stored up air pressure, hydraulic pressure. If you've got a weighted table and you loosen up a hydraulic line, you better watch it, that can come down on you. Um, so potential energy, always just take a look back and try to determine the potential energy of the device that you are currently working on. One of them might be, it's got some giant capacitors there. If there's giant capacitors, you know darn well, you better not be fishing around down there. You're gonna get zapped. And I've been, I've been zapped more than my share of time, guys. Sometimes because I'm a little curious, but that's okay. I take enough precautions, I understand the risks. So safety foresight. There's some real big topics here that I want to go over. Like with safety foresight, some things might be hot. Steam pipes, they don't look like they're hot. They don't look like they're hot at all. If you touch it, it'll instantly take the skin off your hand. I have touched steam pipes on accident and I know a lot of you have too. I've, you know, of course, yeah, I'm, I'm missing skin here and there because if you don't understand, it's a, it's a pipe that comes down and very often it's not insulated, all right? That steam pipe is just a metal hard, hard pipe that comes down and it's plumbed right into your unit. And because it's always hot, you know, and it's, it's behind covers, nobody puts insulation on it. But guess what? When you're back there replacing valves, solenoids or something, it doesn't take anything to touch that, that pipe and your skin comes off instantly. And talk about instant hazards, freezing. Some things are cold. We deal with liquid nitrogen. We deal with ultra low freezers. Now imagine if I just took off my gloves 
and I reached into an ultra low freezer, which is negative 80 degrees C. Some of them are even colder than that. Negative 80, that's 80 below zero centigrade. You reach in there and let's say you want to touch the wall. If your hand is even a little bit wet, guess what? It just froze to the wall instantly. That's negative 80 degrees. Your hand is frozen there. And guess what? When, when your hand freezes, it burns the skin and it kills cells instantly. Not only because like all the water in your cells starts exploding from the freezing, which is frostbite, but you can't get your hand off. And so until somebody figures out a way to get some warm water in there or something, your hand is stuck in there. It's almost happened to me before. You know, you're, you're cleaning out some of that uh, frost that's uh, building up on the walls. Well, guess what? If, if you take your glove off and your hand's a little bit sweaty, mm -mm. some things are cold, guys. Hot, cold, very dangerous for biomeds. Compared to other career fields, we deal with some real extreme stuff, guys. So, you guys should know that when you're cutting things, it, you need your IPPE. You could see today in today's video when we were doing the cardio clips, we had our IPPE on because we're working with chlorine. There is nothing to fool around with. And I was, because of the concentration that I needed to pour in those devices to make sure that they were sanitized to the extent that they were, it was a real strong mixture. We were very cautious to cover it as much as possible and we weren't looking over it. We had eye protection on. It was some serious stuff, guys. Chemical burns. You only got one set of eyes, man. That's it. One of the other hazards a lot of people don't consider. Medical equipment is heavy. It's heavy. Do you know how many biomeds I know with back problems because a device tipped over or because they disconnected something and then it fell in their lap and it's way heavier than they thought? Carts that tip over. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff. My back hurts because... I'll tell you what, back in the day, I was moving a Pentero microscope up an inclined plane and there was a hole in the floor and a Pentero microscope's only got four casters and one of the casters fell in that hole and the whole microscope rocked and it, it basically was falling over on top of me. So I reached over and I put my hands up on this Pentero microscope. Mind you, it's like a $300,000, $350,000 microscope, right? So I pushed it back up. Not only to keep it from hitting me, I might have been able to get out of the way, but something that cost more than my house, I just didn't want to tip it over. I did feel a pop in my back, and it took me months. It was very extremely painful, and I'm, I'm probably still suffering from it today. A little bit here and there, um, but that's one of the hazards you have to t take into account. If something is heavy and tipping over and there's no chance of saving it, get the heck out of the way, man. Let it fall. Because a year, two years worth of back pain, oh, geez, guys, let me tell you, it was miserable. Waking up in the middle of the night, almost crying, it was extremely bad. So, some things are heavy, and you have to plan things out accordingly for some of these repairs. Just today, I was laying on my back, and I used a hydraulic table with a ratchet strap to lift up another table so that I could repair a caster. Why? Because they're heavy, right? Basically, a surgical table is a hydraulic jack, one way or the other. So as long as you're using a strap and you're cognizant of swinging loads, I almost got my hand crushed this morning because as I lifted it up, well, guess what? A strap that's hanging at an angle wants to pull towards the center of gravity, so it pulled the other table over next to the other one. And my hand was down there. I anticipated it, which is why my hand didn't get crushed, but... The fact that it still could have crushed my hand, it's just one of those things. Got to learn, guys. Medical equipment is heavy, okay? Uh, so, here's a, a big one that I always preach to junior biomeds. So, you guys, please listen up. Never touch what you can't see, okay? I did this. I got electrocuted in Germany on 240 volt because... I couldn't see something and I was reaching up and feeling around and I reached over a 240 volt line that shouldn't have been left in the condition that it was, but I was touching something I couldn't see. Now there's things like fans, there's steam pipes, there's freezing cold pipes, there's moving things, there's motors. 
There's electrical hazards. There's sharps. Do you know how many needles I find around hospitals? You go to lift up an item and just stick your hands under it. I never, I never stick my hands under a device without looking under it. I always kind of lift it up and, you know, get a gist of what's underneath it and then put your hand underneath it to pick it up. Don't just grab an item off of like a wheelie cart and just pick it up off the cart. You are going to get needles stuck. I'm telling you, don't do it. So we have electrical issues, we have thermal issues, we have needle sticks, we have sharp materials like glass. There's glass all over in hospitals, guys. It happens, and it's clear. Wouldn't you know it? So you can't really see it. So if you're reaching under something, make sure it's clear and clean. Don't just reach under something and, and anticipate uh, that it's going to be clean. It's never clean, okay? Here's another big one. You have to assume all fluids are contaminated body fluids, if not even worse. Let's say you're in nuclear medicine and you see a fluid just sitting there. You have to anticipate that it's not just a biological hazard, it's a nuclear hazard. It's true, dead serious. If there's a nuclear spill, it's a serious, serious issue. So assume all fluids are contaminated body fluids. In some areas, like Nuke Med, consider all fluids to be nuclear, okay? Ah, here's another one, man. All hand and foot controls are always contaminated. You can never clean them correctly, ever. I see people all the time, all the time, just fooling around, opening up hand controls, foot controls and stuff. I'm telling you, ugh. Do you know how many times I've opened up a foot control and blood or goo juice spilled out? It's true. It does all the time. So that's why I have a separate desk space for admin work where I also eat my lunch and I have a separate workspace. I will not ever combine the two, ever, because there is disgusting stuff inside of stuff. And that is especially true for hand controls and foot controls, not to mention the cords. Nobody wipes those cords down, guys. Every, I wish I wish I had a dollar for every time somebody brought something to my office. And the first question I always ask them is, did you wipe it down? It's a redundant question. I get it. The answer is always yes. Of course we did. No, they didn't. No, I didn't. You know how often I just take a look at it and it's like it's got dried blood on it or wet blood. It's got wet blood on it. I remember when I was working at the MedU, I came into my office one time and somebody had a biological bag with a bloody foot control sitting up on top of my keyboard on my desk where I do my admin work. I absolutely lost my I lost my gourd, guys. Okay? I lost my gourd. There's no way of making me lose. I know I seem like I'm a nice, calm, cool, collected person here. <laughs> I know some of you guys that know me out there, y'all are thinking, oh my gosh, guys, don't don't tell a fib now. I ain't telling nobody no fib. I'm an excitable person. Uh, you can tell I'm very passionate about this stuff. You stick a bloody set of foot controls on my computer desk. I am going to absolutely lose it, and I promise you that, okay? I'm going to lose it. All right, and my last hazard warning for you guys, okay? Never, ever assume that a circuit is de-energized. Ever, ever. See it yourself, and furthermore, test it. You guys seen in my bag, I got the chicken stick, the flute chicken stick, where you, like, turn it on, and you move it around AC to see if it's de-energized. I have almost been killed, guys, because I was up reaching around something when the facility uh, electrician just told me, yeah, I just de-energized it. I look up there, and I start taking off caps. Pop! All because this guy just didn't know what he's doing. Always, always. I know it's my number one rule when it comes to troubleshooting. Never, ever trust somebody else's troubleshooting. And that goes right along with this one. Never ever assume that a circuit is de-energized. See the breaker yourself, and then before you touch the wires, test them. Go get yourself one of those Fluke Ready Testers, those little chicken sticks. They're cheap, and, and they're super handy. I keep one on my toolbox all the time. All right? Okay, guys, it's late. I'm going to go inside, and I'm going to try and enjoy whatever's left of my evening. <laughs> Hopefully silence, because maybe my kids are asleep. So thank you all for watching. Be safe out there. 
this is not the year to be out there playing experimental biomed, okay? Be safe, wash your hands, and hope you guys stay tuned because I have some excellent stuff in the works, okay? Thanks for watching.